I think that's okay. I'm still setting it up. Sorry about this. It always looks dark on my camera at the bottom here. Don't know why. Um, I've got my daylight bulb on and everything. Good afternoon. Sorry I'm early. Uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to fit other things in around myself now. That's, that's my problem. Um, <coughs> and I need the afternoon free. So um, that's why I'm starting at 12 o'clock. And it's five to now. So we're going to do our uh, charcoal portrait. And we've done some kind of... <coughs> Quite a lot of them recently, and my drippy ones. And the more I've got on YouTube, actually, I've got some stuff on YouTube. And some of them I've done on this. If you want to look at them, you know, if you're a member of the group, you can look at them on YouTube as well. Um, the different ones we've done, pick and choose what you want. Uh, I get quite a few hits as well. Uh, don't forget to like them and subscribe to my channel and things like that. So I get more um, people watching me. Um, and I'm going to carry on just doing a few now and again, but the group itself is, like I said, I'm going to fold it up because I've not got time to keep doing three classes, uh, 12 classes a month really. And, uh, and uh, you know, so I have other things on, but I might go back to it, but I'm going to leave everybody who's on, who's stuck with me all the time, the thick and thin, um, uh, I'm going to leave them on the group page, so I'm going to leave the group page until Facebook tells me I'll have to do something about it. So everything you will see that we have done is still going to be on that page unless Facebook changes it, okay? So you, you, I'm not going to kick anybody off now, you members for life, okay? And uh, I'm not charging any subscription fee now and uh, I'm not taking any new membership. If in the foreseeable future things change and I get more time and I can go back online and start advertising it and I get more interest then I'll start it up again because it's been uh, it's been a godsend over the um, over the last few years especially with the Covid and everything the classes stopping you won't believe I started off with 200 people over 200 people online we're now down to about 15 uh, some of them uh, I do know family members, but um, we're down to about 15 now, and life's coming slightly, getting back to normal, you know, our painting holidays are taking off again, and, and uh, my workshops and demos are taking off again, and my classes more or less, so I only do three a week, but uh, you know, they're important to me, and, uh, and we want to promote these painting holidays, because naturally, I want to go and live in the sunshine for as much as I can, uh, even though it's painting, um, you know, and they're advertising my website, so if you want to start looking, we're, we're trying to get Croatia filled for October, I know it's a bit short notice, but that's been going for the last two years now, we've not been able to advertise it proper, uh, because of everything else, and Covid restrictions and whatever, um, so we're, we're trying to get some, we only need about eight people, I think, on that one. Uh, to go to paint, so that'd be quite easy if we could fill that, and uh, then we're looking at um, next year. We're looking at um, where we've been before, which is Tuscany, which was a beautiful week. So, painting in Florence in watercolors is just an experience that you need to kind of, uh, you know, have a go at. It's just beautiful. Uh, walking into the into Florence and then uh, just picking your spots and painting, it was lovely. And then back into um, Tuscany, the Greve, which is where we we stay at a farm just outside Greve. And uh, we go to the Greve market on a Saturday to shop, and then we do some painting in the afternoon. And then we, we've got a studio on the farm where we do our own work, and then we paint outdoors as well. Uh, all around the farm, so it's just idyllic. And she feeds us, and we buy drinks, and <laughs> we have a laugh. Uh, <coughs> and uh, we sort everything out when we get there because she's so uh, she's so uh, good at um, looking after people. As you know. Anyway, that's advertised, and Derbyshire's full. 
would you believe? So we've got uh, two weekends, watercolours and they're full. So our first one's in June and then we've got one in August. So yeah, things are happening. Um, I will come back to this, hopefully, if we get more interest. I have had a few people inquire and I've turned them down because uh, I just want to take stock of what I'm doing at the moment and then get back to it. But for all you people who've stuck with me, I really, really appreciate it. And I hope you've, uh, you've learned a lot. You've learned a lot and you're actually using it in your work. And uh, yeah, keep coming back. Keep watching me on, fit on YouTube. Uh, keep coming back to the website, the Facebook page. Uh, email me whenever you want. Uh, just to know you're interested and you're still painting and whatever. And uh, enjoy it. That's the main thing. You need to enjoy what you're doing. You don't want to be stressed over creativity. You know, let your inner feelings out. As you start copying from photographs, it becomes personal as well because you don't know the person, but you're using the image. And then we are, you know, you are, are, are enhance it in your own way by using your, your own feelings about things. So that's what you have to learn, I think, in time. And it's the way you paint, it's the technique you use, and it all comes out in the work, okay? So um, without further ado, now it's 12 o'clock and I spoke for five minutes. I just have to talk for, talk for another hour <laughs> because I never stop talking these days. And uh, sometimes I wonder where I get the words from, but I just talk about what pops in my head, you know? So if I go off at a tangent now and again, it's usually to think, what, what can I have for my lunch or what can I have for dinner? Anyway. So um, it's a lovely black girl, so we're going to do skin tones. I'm going to glaze it with some lovely colours. I'm not covering the whole sheet this time. We're actually on gesso paper again. Lining paper. People are just always asking me about it. Lining paper. You use it for decorating your house. And it can get different thicknesses. It's very thick. Yeah. So uh, I'm not promoting it. I'm just telling you this is what I use. And uh, we give it a coat of acrylic gesso. Because the acrylic gesso seals the paper and it seals any paper, it seals anything you put it on and that allows you to paint on it then in pastel, charcoal, oils, acrylics, anything you want, yeah? So it would save you a lot of money and, and there's nothing wrong with using paper. There's artists, I was just on about one the other day, uh, from um, Tower, uh, Tem, not Tem, but it St Ives and they used to paint on driftwood and I can't remember his name. Uh, but he's selling his work sells for thousands, you know. So uh, pieces of driftwood washed up on the shore and he paints on it, you know. You don't have to have perfectly very expensive canvas or whatever, okay. Whatever you paint on. As long as you prepare it well, it'll last a lifetime. And above, hundreds of years. Okay, so we're on gesso paper. We're using willow charcoal. Again, I've got coats, which I will plug because... Uh, my mate um, Phil went down to, to the place where they make them and they actually supply a lot of the uh, the other art suppliers and uh, art shops in the, in the country and across the world actually and uh, I do like the charcoal and it's it's not too dark it comes off easily and uh, it's it's quite chunky sticks as well and it's very cost effective because uh, you only pay about five or six pounds for a box full of it. Okay, uh, we're using acrylic paint. These are Windsor & Newton, so um, Windsor & Newton, which I do promote, but I bought these myself. So, you know, if you're watching David, a few acrylic paints. Um, we are doing Art in the Pen again this year. It just brought me onto that, but I'm doing watercolours, so I'll be pr promoting um, Cotman and um, Artist Quality of Windsor & Newton. Uh, watercolours out in the pen is in August uh, I think it's the second week of August so it's on for Saturday Saturday and Sunday it's a big event lots of art people uh, and people selling the work but I'll be just painting so we'll be there for the weekend um, well I'm using like I said gallery uh, cobalt blue uh, not cobalt ultra, ultramarine blue um, we're also using ultra uh, alizarine crimson Galleria again, and we're using Bert Sienna. Now, uh, with these, um, because it's a black girl, uh, well, I get a lot of the skin tones, and uh, it's not black, it's lovely colours actually. We've got lizards in there, we've got Siennas in there, we've got blues in there, okay? 
So I know it's a girl and we're using blue and we don't want her to look like she's got a, a morning after shadow, you know, but uh, the skin tones are important. So how it's going to work out, I don't really know. I have done quite a few black fellas, not done many black girls, so we'll see how it works. It's, it's, a, it's news for me again. So, uh, you know, don't be frightened to try new things. It's how you learn and any mistakes you make. Um, I just step, stand back, see if I'm going okay. Yeah, we're online. Looks bright enough now. So I'm going to cover the whole thing. Just get me a, have a swig. And, uh, yeah, we're, good. we're doing talk bomb tomorrow. So while I'm talking, this is week nine. Uh, yeah, this is week nine, class nine, sorry, and uh, it's Chuck on Acrylic Portrait, yeah, on just of Pepper. Tomorrow we're doing a drippy one. Now, I've got the image and I'm going to put it on after, and uh, it is a portrait, naturally. I do love these drippy ones, and they're getting more and more popular, you know, and they're getting simpler to do. So try them, you know, don't go mad with the drips. I know I call them drippy acrylics, but you do get drips from runs, you know. It looks like just throwing a lot of paint at the canvas and the heads appear. And that's what I want. So I'm, they're getting quite popular. So I'm, I'm trying to go, trying to do a few more uh, like that. So this young girl, we better start, don't we, instead of keep talking. Um, <coughs> I've got my big brushes. I've got a jug of water, a jar of water. So you need a palette to mix the paint in <coughs> and something to wipe your, uh, your brushes on, which is a big towel here. I'll not get my paint out yet because it starts to dry up. I've also got some white pastel, hard white pastel, and we do use uh, compressed charcoal, which is black. It's like black pastel, it's very strong. We don't use that to, to start with because you can't remove it, but we do use it later, so you want a stick of that. Make sure it's jet black and not grey because a lot of black charcoal or compressed charcoal or black pastel, they call it is uh, our black charcoal is actually grey, you know. You want it darker than your willow, all right? So I'll get some sticks out, uh, <coughs> and then I'm gonna cover, again, like I said, I don't wanna cover the whole paper. I'm just gonna cover a kind of midsection, and I wanna create lovely shapes in this one, if possible, like, uh, you know, and, and, do, and draw into it a little bit. Um, Again, it's all about your underpainting and what you what you put in in your underpainting. And I've just dropped that on the floor. Come here. Uh, don't, <laughs> don't leave charcoal on the floor. You'll stand into it. You'll stand in it, and it'll go everywhere. It'll be all over the house if we not. So I've got lots and lots of lovely textures in that. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to blend the centre portion more or less. Uh, so get a nice flat tone. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's uh, uh, light in one place and dark in another. I'm not that bad. I've got marks in there. Can you see these lines? I've got the marks from the charcoal as well. And I'm going to make it a little bit darker. So a bit more charcoal. Especially around this area because that's the shadows on the face. And they create this lovely shape. Uh, this is going off the picture. So it's fine. Uh, just a thing like that. And then we can draw things. Uh, in the head, <coughs> excuse me, and then we'll leave it, and uh, I'm not going to blend it anymore, except for a little bit in the hair, and then we're going to draw the head, okay, you don't fix that because we need to remove it, we've got a rubber as well that you need to use, yeah, if you want to clean your rubber, just wipe it on a damp cloth, that's all you need to do, because they always get full of charcoal, and a hard rubber is better than a putty rubber, because it will fall to bits, it put it over on the gesso paper because it's like sandpaper. So that's what you want. And the hard rubber will remove the charcoal and leave you a lovely bright light light. Because what we're doing is going back on the when we painted the hair, we're going back to white pat white charcoal. I don't know if you can see that on the picture. White um underpainting, which is the gesso. So it's pure white gesso underneath. Alright. I'm not going to do any spattering because I need to dry before I do anything. So, you know, I'm just going to leave it and then uh, sketch it out. Okay? So, using a little bit of charcoal, I'm going to draw the head. Now, when you draw the head, although you're looking up at her and it's an egg shape, it's still an egg shape. 
and the, the, the chain is about here, okay? So we've got this egg, and you're gonna say, yeah, which is looking away from you, but I wanna get the chin on, like that, and I wanna get the, the head on, or quite a lot of the head, okay? So, but I, the first thing I do is draw an egg, and then we draw the center line. And you're thinking, what the heck? Because she's looking in a different direction. So the center lines need to be in the center of that egg. Okay, and we, the reason we use willow is because we can rub it off dead easy. You need some tissue to create, to get rid of the dust, okay? It's a bit of a messy job, but very enjoyable, okay? Don't wipe your hands on your clothes, once you don't get all over your face. So the first thing I'm doing, if I make that head turn to the left, I've got a centre line like that. So what that does, this, these eyes, which should be here, are going to move to here, okay? And that is not far off what I'm looking at on the picture. But I'm also looking up at this young girl, okay? So instead of seeing a straight line, if I drew a line from that eye to that eye, it's the left eye is lower than the right eye. So from that eye, from that corner where the, where the egg, it goes, well, you try and imagine this curve because I'm tilting the egg as well, I'm tilting it upwards. So what happens is this cur this straight line becomes a curved line. And you imagine it going around the back of the egg and you get this ellipse like, like that. You don't have to put that in, but you can imagine. So what that does, when I put the middle socket in, because where the two curved lines go, not that one, so we get rid of that one because I've moved the egg. So I get a curve instead of a line. So I put a socket in there. Now, because it's going around the corner, it goes narrower, okay? So we don't have it the same, but we do have it big um, because it's a young girl as well. So we want those lovely eyes. And we have them the same kind of size, can you see? And this one is going around the corner. So again, that's narrow. It's touching this one, and that gives me that lovely kind of shape of a socket. That's the socket, right? Which and the, the line there has should go through the middle of the circle. So we've got the this middle section here. Okay. Uh, so that is where the pupil goes. If you put the pupil in the middle, actually I'll not do it, I'll just put it get a little, a little bit charcoal. If you put the pupil in the middle, I don't know if you can see this. Uh, here she's gonna look straight ahead, all right? But she isn't, she's actually looking ahead, but slightly to her, her left or to her right. So the pupil's over here, and if you look, it's right in the corner position. Like that. So if you wanna do it this way, it positions the eyes straight away, okay? So you have no problem later, because it gives you one eye it gives you the correct positioning for both eyes. Again, if I put a pupil in the middle of the circle, she will look straight ahead and she'll look strange after. But because I move it over and I put the iris in, I make this one bigger because it's nearer, and then all I do is put the top eyelid in, curve, straight line. Okay? Don't, don't draw the bottom, uh, the bottom eyelid. It's, it's quite light, and we've got a half moon shape there as well. We don't do it yet, just put the iris, uh, the pupil, and the uh, the shadow of the top eyelid. The top eyelid casts a shadow on the eye. We do the same with this one, but because it's going around the corner, you can't see it. They can't see the straight bit, you just get a curve like that. But you don't go outside that, uh, don't go outside that uh, position. And then because I'm looking up, her eyebrows are here, uh, so I've got this lovely shape of her eyebrows and it goes a little bit darker where the nose is and they line up, they do line up, you can see, so that other eyebrow is there. It automatically positions the eyes and the position of the nose and everything else by doing it this way. So I, I can get rid of that actually because I don't need that curve anymore. And it gets a bit confusing. So what I have got now is the nose. Now the nose 
and the position of this lovely dark shape inside that eye okay and because it's a young girl we do not want to make her eyes baggy so we get rid of that line as well because that's the bag on the eye and we get rid of this bag as well so all you're seeing is the top eyelid uh, the iris and the pupil that's it and this is the reason we use charcoal because you can use your finger or a tissue or a tortillon which is a rolled up piece of paper to remove the charcoal can't you <laughs> but you look at the half moon shapes on the corner of the eye where it goes into this tear duct okay but we need to position the nose next so because we've got this curve we need another curve which is about halfway between the eyes and your chin so we need this curve here and we also got the mouth which is not on a curve but it's right under the, the nose so we've got the position of the bottom of a nose which is there and if you look at the tip of the nose it's really you drop a line down from there we've got a shape like that and it's actually the tip of a nose is about here and it looks really really weird because that is the shape that goes down to underneath the nose so you're getting this lovely uh, if I draw a line from here like that it lines up with the side of a nostril there so we've got a nice dark shape there as well and it's the other reason why we use willow charcoal because we blend things together like that so squint look at the light catching things put the nostrils in the nostrils quite big yeah one there like that which is in the middle of the nose which is there and one here now look at the um at the bit in between your nostrils can't remember what it's called uh look at that shape the distance keep it light keep it the same distance and that's the bit under a nose that goes into the philtrum philtrum is very important we've got a line there we've got a curve here which is the top of the lip and then it goes back on itself to the bottom of her nose which is there okay so we can draw that shape and we can take some light out around the nostril like that don't worry about what it looks like your brain is going to be saying all sorts to you that's not right can't be right that everything's changed you know but as you start positioning things she will uh, appear as if by magic okay so uh, there's a lovely light on her cheek and the background forehead cheek this side of her lip and everything is going around the corner so we cannot see we can just about see where the light's catching her face here uh, uh, and it's the same tonal value as the background so uh, we've got a lovely dark at the top because we're looking up you see and then we've got the, the middle muscle on the top lip, which is quite thick lips, yeah. Uh, so you do not shrink away from that shape. It's a lovely dark shape there. And then the, the corner of the mouth, again, we drop a line down. It's more or less one straight line, that. Corner of the nose, corner of the mouth, all lined up. Uh, more or less one straight line from there because <coughs> that's the bit that goes under the eyebrow there we've got, you'll see it better when um, when we start to remove the charcoal okay and then we've got the bottom lip so these shapes and lines and curves we don't really need them there we do need to keep it slightly darker on that side okay and then we've got this corner of the mouth on this side you can just about see it uh, where the angle of the top uh, the bottom lip is now I know you can see a teeth you don't have to put the teeth in I always saying this then the angle of a chin and once you've got the philtrum there and the middle of the mouth because that's what that is you need to find the middle of a chin there so you've got this angle and then it comes down and then we've got an angle for the chin like that and then that disappears over that side so the egg becomes redundant okay we don't need to use it anymore we've just got these dark shapes 
that give us the shape of a neck. And she's also got uh, a polar neck on, so you can draw the shape of the polar neck. Uh, if you want to put the Wrangler jacket she's wearing, we've got this lovely curve, and then that goes across her back. Before I do any of that, I need to know where her hair is, her parting, her, her fringe, sorry, from the front of her head, and this curve which comes down to the top of her eyebrow, because that now is, is going to be a forehead. It's quite high up, but it goes all off the picture on that. Okay. Don't, don't try and keep it shrunk on. I'll prefer I'm going off the picture, actually, because you start to zoom in on the eyes, okay? Uh, so we've got a different tonal value on this side and then these have got lovely shapes again and as we come down here now it goes dark again we can block in and see block in use some more charcoal actually um, look at the shadows around the features around the face go a little bit darker where you need to it's like just where the chin is you will always get a darker tone as the light catches the face. So where the light catches the face, you'll get a dark tone. Uh, so this is the bottom lip, and then this is under the bottom lip, because it's quite dark there. And then we're coming in, there, like that. And then we're going into a chin, which is like that. Okay, and then under there, we're getting some light. So this is the kind of chin, and this is the dark bit. Okie dokie, because it's bony, you get your bony um, your jawline, so that's the main reason. And then from here, you've got that lovely angle of the hair, and then it actually comes this way. And it comes past here, like that, because she's got kind of rasta, rastafarian haircut. Yeah, and then <clears throat> we've got these lovely nice shapes at the back of the head. Lock it in. Uh, this is going into a temple area, which is quite dark up there on that side. And the side of her eye as well, nice and dark. And just under that eye. Okay, this is where the eye starts to form because you're actually taking the light off in a bit. But we don't want it to, you don't put a line underneath. It's just a shadow. And then the side of her, uh, where the hair is, is quite uh, We've got this tactile stuff, we just remove, we're going to remove the light catching her hair and it's all kind of going that way. You can leave some light, you can also remove it. I do like the way, uh, the shape of that, uh, that hair just on its own there and that comes kind of the back of her, her collar uh, and the, on the uh, and her wrangler. You know. So you get the wrangler top. You don't have to put this in, but sometimes it's nice to put the shoulder in so you know where it is. Okay, uh, we can't see the other one, but we've got these lovely lines. Again, we'll put them in later. Uh, and this one especially, which is coming from the corner of the mouth. And that one from the chin. And then this one, is one here under the chin. Again, you don't have to put everything. So... I'm happy with position now, I think. Get your chat, get your piece of gold up tissue, okay? And then I'm just gonna lift off the lighter tones. I'm actually removing charcoal. Okay, so when you get near so it because it's tactile, you know, the more you press on, the more you're gonna take off. But don't press on too much. Um, you'll lose things. So you don't want it to disappear altogether, if you know what I mean. The background we can create, not light in the background, we can rub out the shape like that. Keep all of the, keep all of the, um, the line around the cheek, because that's where that's trying. So it's like the cheek and the nose, okay? And you can see the light on the nose. Roll your, um, roll your tissue up. And then we've got this lovely light coming in here the nose and then it comes past the eye so you get a curve the comes past the eye like that, uh, into the top of the nose you see and then you get the cheek which is quite light and then we go around the nose because it's light there 
into the filtering bit, which is there. Um, we'll take the light off in a bit. Keep it dark under there. Uh, a bit of light on that nose there. Keep it uh, blending slightly. <coughs> and then you get your filtering, which is a nice light area. But we've also got light on our lip, top lip, just at the top, around the edges, you can see. And then we've got light at the bottom lip, which is like quite an angular shape, actually, isn't it? So we've got that shape, and then we get the shape of a chin. Like that. Bit of time spent positioning things helps you really, really uh, get things in the right spot. And um, it will end up looking like the person, that's the idea. You know, so a cheek, uh, under that eyebrow there, nice and light. And then as we're coming in here, it's going lighter there. So I want to take the light off on her, on her eye and take the light off on that half moon shape there. Um, it's very difficult to uh, to do it with a tissue, but persevere because it helps. And then we can take a bit of light off and uh, scrunch it up a bit. Where the corner of the eye is, which is there and there. And then that lovely light catching there when you're going to do that with her. And then as you're coming into cheekbone, get that really strong shape of a cheekbone. Alright, uh, keep these eyes dark so I can redraw that, not to worry. And that's blending into the side of her nose. And as you get down here, soft, and then you come into uh, the uh, position of a nostril is and that blends into the rest of a cheek you can see and you can soften that with your finger so it just blends into the rest of a face like that, around the mouth around the nose some like that redraw if you've rubbed anything out redraw uh, stand back redraw so we'll put this back like that Keep the eyes slightly to the left because she's looking just over this way, but it's quite dark actually, so if we put all that in as a dark shape and then not the eye, and then you've got this again. We want to use the rubber to bring that out, and like that. Uh, <coughs> keep this eye nice and dark too, so we've got that lovely dark shape where it hits the nose. All right, so now. I use the rubber, okay? And um, we use the rubber for the light in her hair, like that. Um, I'm not taking anything off the hair, am I? That's why. See, what happens if you start using the, um, the rubber too soon, and um, it, it just moves the dust a bit. So you need to kind of get rid of the dust first, and then uh, we can look at the background. So we can get rid of all this as well, if you want to. Leave some of it if you want to, or I'll just get rid of it. Blend this charcoal bit because it's going into a cheek and the inside of a <coughs> inside of the uh, um, jaw. Actually, yeah, it's not working. So we have got sharp edges as well because we want sharp edges on this, and um, because we've got this piece of a uh, hair. Which is a lovely kind of, like I said, hanging down like that. And we can get rid of anything in the background if you want to. Or you can leave some of it, it doesn't really matter. Just to give you some texture. And this comes off the picture. And then blend that into the rest of the head, which is disappearing off the painting. So we can lighten the background if you want. Come down to the forehead. And then I'll start with the rubber on the forehead. Like this. Uh, it's a lovely kind of dark light shape there as well. So you get the forehead, look at the light catching it, squint. Okay, <laughs> and it comes all the way down that light to the nose because you get this really strong kind of light on her. Uh, you've got the light on the top eyelid as well, 
uh, as well as the bottom eyelid just slightly and then the half moon bit and in that eye right there and uh, this bit under the eyebrow is quite light as it comes in as well keep that shape of an eyebrow roughly you can hardly see it because it's catching the light and the background and the, <laughs> the background and the forehead are nearly the same so I've got this really nice light then on the nose coming down here and then we've got a flat bit on the end of the nose got kind of circular flat and this comes into shape here squint and then you get this lovely light here under that nostril this bit of the nose again disappears into the lights on the other side of her face which is the cheek which is Rembrandt's triangle again so we keep that shape but we want it to disappear okay so you put it in and then lose it we make a nostril bigger because it is bigger because it's going in the corner okay so we've got this really nice shape like that. and we can take that off later and then because we uh, paint the light around the nostril and then from that nostril we go down to the filter and then we go down the side of the mouth and the face can you see So we can soften that because it goes inside the nostril. See? Uh, we're going to do all this with uh, the tissue. We get down <laughs> and uh, take the light off this side of her face. We can corners of her eye. Got this really nice area. It goes very light there. Uh, we've also got this light here which is the light and the half moon bit of her eye a little bit there as well and the light catching there and then we can do this lovely light inside the eye like that and the top of her eyelid it's catching the light and then the corner it's nearly white in that car. Well, it, it is white. I uh, usually get a tear duct as well, which catches the light. Um, this bit is going a little bit later. Blend it with your finger, and then that blends into the rest of the face. So I don't want it going too uh, too light over there. Do we? And um, we got the. You can just see a little bit of light here on the forehead and this bit comes down to the top of the eyebrow which actually gives you that kind of shape like that. so we blend that bit you get a triangle shape which is the side of a head you see so it's all there <laughs> okay now and we do the same with the jaw actually but then um, we'll use the rubber so that's the filtrum and then you got the top lip, which is catching light, uh, and this side of the lip, see, which again disappears into the side of a, a face over there. And then the bottom lip, get rid of all this later, or you can just leave it, because you get, you're just going to rub things out. The bottom lip, like I said, is a blocker tone, which blends here. Like that and then it comes round goes into the chin and then we've got this lovely negative space which is actually the, the shape of a uh, hair in the background <coughs> use a bit of tissue just to soften areas again you can redraw things uh, you're getting reflected light which is coming from the top because it's lovely and white this top that's blue and white. So we can put that in. You can put the top in as well. 
side of the face disappearing. Once you put it in then just go over it. And we can see where it is. We just not got a line. And that's more kind of more or less what we want because it's realism, isn't it? Uh, beautiful. That's what we're seeing. Uh, we've got a bit of light on a mid-tone value, which again is the light on the nose there because it's slightly lighter this is the highlight there and the forehead there okie doke keep this a little bit darker keep saying that and i've gone a bit too late myself keep that nice and dark subtle changes in tone here it's just got a little bit more light on the forehead and then that goes into uh, the jawline because it's blue there actually because it's reflecting okay uh, button <laughs> you don't have to do button we can do a, a jacket collar uh, on the top of the top of a collar again I should have done it with this here because it's just rubbing the charcoal there Top of a collar like that. I'm going to redraw because I need. I should be glazing now. Actually, I'm going to redraw just this bit because it needs to be darker. You see? Like that. And then add some of her hair, little bits here and there. Teeth. You don't matter about teeth. You can take the light out. <laughs> don't want to look in uh, too. Much like Bugs Bunny. Um, so I'm not doing too much. Okay, do. And then we've got these lovely kind of wrinkly wrinklies in her, which we can use later. Can't we? Okay, do. Yeah. This way, you can go mad with the, with the charcoal and just lock it in. Uh, I'm actually rubbing things off. So, there you go. So, we can um, fix that. <laughs> fix it. Uh, I'm just going to tear this in a little bit. <laughs> what we can do if you're happy with the eyes is put the, the shadow, the dark shadow in. Pupil. Uh, leave a bit of light and the iris so we get this lovely dark. You see? Like that. Uh, you can make it a bit smaller now just to give you that shape. So we're just having this shadow of that top eyelid. And because we can see the thickness of the skin there, it's, look, it's quite thick and comes right in. It's an angle. Put the pupil in. <laughs> nostrils, corners of the mouth again, nice and dark, which blend into the rest of the mouth. Uh, curb, uh, the top lip. Now uh, you can put a, a line in for the teeth if you want. Make the left one disappear a bit. Top of the lip. Uh, we don't have any darks really. Um, this one. I'm going to make it come out from the side of a cheek, somewhere there. Uh, again, this is compressed circle, but we don't want too much of it because it's uh, hard to get off. Well, that'll do, more or less. Uh, nostril, nice and dark. And this is the corner of the mouth over there, which you can't see. It's going around the corner. Okay, now. Let's spray. I'm going to spray it, have a drink, because I'm gasping. Spray it. 
and we make sure we get everything. Make sure you spray the compressed fully. Don't want the spray to be running. You just want it to coat everything and let it dry. I've got a hair dryer. Put the hair dryer, dry it off, touch the eyes because that's where I put most of my charcoal. Okay, clean a finger <laughs> if you can. Um, just clean it and dry it because you don't, you don't, excuse me, you don't want it rubbing off. Uh, and then just do that. You don't want any water on, that's what I'm saying. Just do that over your compressed. If it doesn't come off, it should be good to go. Just put a bit on her hair there because it, it smudged. It's usually the thickest parts of the willow charcoal that you find <coughs> hardest to remove, hardest to spray. Alright, so again, I'll just dry that off. Right, and then we're going to glaze. Now we're ready to glaze. So that's not coming off. No, just a little bit, but not a lot. So what I'm going to do is use burnt sienna. Because it's light, I want burnt sienna this side. She's looking at me out. It's weird, isn't it? Burnt sienna on the left hand side, full of warms. Then I'm going on this green, and then I'm going blue. Okay? So that's, that's my plan of action. I don't need a lot of paint. Because I'm just doing glazes. Okay. So we do need to uh, add water to your sienna. And I want it, I want it to be quite uh, not too thick, but thick enough to see the colours on this one. Okay. Alizarin is quite thick, uh, quite strong, and ultramarine kind of loses its uh, a little bit of its strength. So okay, clean your brush and you don't want to stick your little ultramarine now you've had it with bird sienna and then we just I'm going to put it everywhere so I'm not just kind of bothered about where it goes okay like this and then we can go and have a lizarine on this side of the face like that. And there's a reddish tone you can do it down there as well Quite a lot of dark, and then we're going blue. Blues. Like that. Into the side of the head, and uh, not too thick. I've got a bit thick like that, so. but I want that uh, lovely white to stand out. And we need it to splatter, and we need it to drip, and we need uh, a brush that's kind of dry because I want that to soften so where the head is just dragging the paint or the drips you can see uh -uh. she kind of disappears and that's what I want it's a bit scary because you think she's going you know she's not going she's there She's underneath, you're seeing the light here on this bit. So if I dry that off, you'll, that's the cheek and the blue area. And that area. Well, that's the white on the face, and I want to keep that warmth turning into cool. Okay, so that's what I want to do. <laughs> and the softness. So this is just the dry brush. All right, it's a bit weird, it's got all funny. What it does for blending and it's a paintbrush isn't it so i don't want any more water on it you see so because i want it to dry and it can just start running so dry it off
Let's see how the stops it from running. It also gives it texture if you want to uh, rub out some bits. And if you want to uh, just add a bit of clean water, we can splash it in a hair because that will give you the shapes of those lovely um, Rastafarian hairstyle. Okay. So, yeah, creating these really nice uh, shapes. I'm just going to wet that. And if you wet these, you'll get to, it'll come off easier later. Yeah, and we can do a bit of glazing, so don't worry about that. I'll keep laying with this one until I'm happy with it. It's taken quite a bit of time, but uh, worth spending time on. Yeah, I think you're okay. Just turn it this way a little bit and up, <laughs> upwards, onwards and upwards. Okay. Right, I quite like the look on her face, and this is what uh, inspired me about the image. Actually, get your cloth. No, <coughs> just look at the head. If you get shapes or contrast or ton of values in the right places, it should start to look like the person. Okay. And people are saying, how do I get a likeness? Well, this is the way you get a likeness. Because you need to have those lovely contrasts. You see? And we blend the things together. Now with this one, it doesn't matter if you go outside the line of a head. Um, we've got this really nice highlight. As it dries, it's easy to get off. It's harder to get off and that's, that's really what we want because you don't want it coming off very easy because it's, um, you'll go back to the white paper very, very quickly and you don't want to do that. So I'm just looking around this eye and removing the light or the, the colour and the light where I can see it in that eye, you can see, to give me that shape. i uh, got a little bit there and a little bit on her and then I go into the cheek. Her cheek's quite light. Which blends into the side of the nose. <coughs> so, because we're going around a corner, we've got a little bit of softness here. Like that. Do it slowly, don't take it too much too soon. Like that. Okay. <coughs> Look at the shape, look at the light, you've got a lovely straight line there. Like that. We've got reflected lights here and light there and the tip of the nose is very light. Okay, and that comes down to the top of the nostril, that side. So as you can see, I'm just doing the same thing, but I'm doing it with a cloth. And I got the light around that nostril. Can you see? Which goes into and then we get a nice block of light from the filter to the top lip, like that. <coughs> which again that blends into this side of the face. Uh, you can also see a little bit of reflected light around the nostril. Uh, it's not a highlight, it's just a reflection. And then that disappears into the cheek on that side. Okay. It's not easy to get 
detail. This is the reason we do it. Because you just keep the marks simple. And then you go back to where you've just been. So you start to take it off more and more. Okay? So again, we've got that lovely light, top of the lip. We can glaze that later. And filter them. That. And then it disappears here. Around the corner of the mouth. Like that. We've also got the teeth. Which are catching the light. Just a little bit. And this goes this way. Got a little speckle on the face. Corners of the nose. Like that. And we're coming round to the corner of the mouth. That's the light and the, and the lip, top, bottom lip, nice block of tone, <coughs> very light at the top, and it goes a bit lighter, darker. Let me take the light off on the chin, <coughs> it's going quite light there, and then it disappears down there again, into the front of the chin. Uh, reflected lights. To the side of the chin and side of the head. Reflections and we do the same thing here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I just have to be careful here because You've got some very delicate fine lines. So have them anywhere. <coughs> Up here, under the eyebrow, inside the eye, see? Then around the eyebrow. Then you've got that top eyelid as well, which is catching more light. Blends with all the bit. <coughs> and that blends into the rest of the nose. In between the eyes. Top of the um, eyebrow, and a bit of light there. And this is that shape I took out earlier. It's a little bit lighter than this bit. I'm just removing a little bit of reflected light and then we're coming down from here, corner and the corner of the face and also <laughs> and that bit's light and then it goes into a bit of a cheek and this is where it kind of meets up uh -huh. cheekbone and then it blends into the rest of the cheek. Okay. Let's get the drips off. That's where you get these marks now. Huh? Inner hair. Inner hair. Um, light. Side of the nose. There. Where the nostril is. And here got like a little triangle bit. Lovely light. 
and you get the uh, <coughs> bridge of the nose again uh, this is the top of that ivory this is quite light there actually <coughs> and it blends into that so that's where you get your flat shape in between and you can actually see where it's very strong light now so once you've got it in it's easier once you've got the initial marks there it gets easier because go back to it <coughs> and you can tell then whether it's dark or light you see Okie dokie. Um, I usually take the colour off at the bottom of the eye, but uh, yeah, I'll just do it. She's got very strong dark eyes, so I'll just do it on that one. <coughs> this blends into the nose. And then we've got a light bit there. That blends into the rest of her. Face. And then we've got a light bit just above the eyebrow because the eyes goes lighter there and in the bit, middle of the forehead and then a bony bit there like that. You see? This is going to be a little bit of light just at the corners of her mouth. Reflective light. Like that. This goes into the rest of the face really. Uh, we can just see lip, shape of the lip and you can just see the light just catching top hook it up so with black people we don't see we don't take as much of the charcoal out actually because we need to leave it as a uh, contrast don't know about it and we need colour as well, so we can we can add more colour naturally. So that's kind of the hair uh -huh. coming down um, the neck and the uh, side of the head. A forehead. And then we've got these lovely shapes up here on the hair. And we can redraw. Anything I quite like that to uh, back the ring up to this. I don't want to let it disappear, so we'll just do the shape of the light at the back of her head. And then here we can do some shapes. But uh, the light is where the hair. Um, um, a hair falls, the ringlets, like that. We'll add a few more actually to uh, the artistic license. And this is the bit. Like that. Um, I quite like the way I've got these drips here, you see. So I might not, take, I might not bother taking too many off. Quite like this. The shapes of that's a shirt colour, that's the colour of a wrangler. Wrangler. And the shape at the side of the head. Which is like a big flat area. I'll go back into this, don't forget, with me uh, compressed charcoal. And we use white pasta, so we don't just leave it like this. And uh, I'm getting a bit, bit kind of over time. So I'm not bothered to that. That's what I started it a little bit. There's a reason I wanted to <laughs> start early actually, but I knew it might take me longer. <sighs> it's a 
Riley's it being black girl, it's quite uh, a complicated head move, move uh, turn. So, you know, that lovely light here. Yeah. And all that. So this is the um, light of her eye, actually. Arm cheek. Soften the cheek. Again, where I wet that paper, I just want to take the light out at the back because that's where I've got a lot of this uh, dirt. Colour. Uh, it is a bit blue, but that's fine. Uh, you can have this light here. again. Coming down the face and the hair. And you think you've got the white bits in, and then you realise you've not. <laughs> so on that lip, I got, all I can see there on this side is a little bit of light cut in the corner of the mouth. Uh, uh, this goes a little bit lighter. And it goes that way. And I blend this a bit too. Because I think it's the shape between the top of her eye. Okie doke. Uh, this negative. That's a light. Make it for space. And an angle of a jaw. I need this colour to just stand out a little bit in front of her. Excuse me. Okay, and black compressed charcoal. Best. So um, again, redraw, especially this one. It's nice and dark as it goes into the corner. Uh, that's it. If you want to do a few eyelashes, that's fine. It is at this stage. And then from the nostrils. Again, nice and dark, a little bit darker on the other side as well. This one, nice and dark. And it goes that way outside. Around the corner. Got a, it's got a bit of a mole on her cheek. Uh, got a nice dark here. If you use it in the shadows now, just be careful. You don't want it to be too strong. Uh, I can put this dark shape of a eyebrow in. Right. Um, the lip. Beautiful light, and then this lovely curve of the top lip. Like that. That's where the light's catching it, and it's making it stronger, making it a little bit stronger. Um, and that's it. 
thickness of the lip. Right. Corner of the mouth and that lovely angle there and the one here again the corner of the mouth. Very strong. Uh, lovely shadow there and that. It's a bit dirty. I'm not I don't like drawing. Let's start this eye, that's really strong light, dark, and it comes around the tear duct. Again, I've got the pupil and the iris. <coughs> and that blends into this area. So the top eyelid always overlaps, the bottom eyelid. So you've got a crease. And the eyebrow. We've got a really strong dark. Just around this. And don't forget, we can glaze again. So now I'm using less and less pastel, charcoal. <coughs> Stand back. Less and less pastel, and then I can add charcoal. I mean. So there you go. And then I can start adding kind of a bit more detail. Huh? Like Alright. Uh, let this kind of disappear. And behind that jacket. And you don't have to have Dark shit everywhere. It's just hinting at things that uh, brings out the shapes. Uh, Look at it. I can just about see a few eyelashes on this one. And I do like the way her hair just brings out that side of the face. Now that uh, negative space. Take a bit of light out the background. Gives you negative space. Around the hair, little shapes, and some of this. So, some of these drips will do. You can use pure white pigment. bit of white pasta because they have gone back to the the gesso underneath which is pure white but kind of lost the 
strength of the pure white so I can put it back with white pastel or even white paint. Okay. I'm just over, I think. I'm going to start a bit light. Just over. Eyes now, beautiful eye lights. Where you can see the light catching her. When you use pastel now, you have to fix it. You see? Just put it in where you're seeing strong lights. That's so all. Don't put it everywhere. Uh, so it's like noticing the bridge of the nose. And then the tip of the nose. Okay, white. And then that lovely light underneath that nostril. Coming around it. It's disappeared, so it's This comes out as well. And then we can lighten up the top of the filter a bit. You see? And then we'll do some light on the top of it. It's kind of glossy. And the side of the mouth. And this bit. Kind of glossy. Move on to the other eye. Got a little bit of white on that little ball. Light off. Uh, I mean, you got the edge of this, which is really strong. And then it goes a bit, a bit darker. Okay. So we can use this for our lights on. We can also use it for highlights on the head. Now, you just have to be careful. You don't use too much on the skin, or else you'll lose it. you lose that um, transparency, and that's not what we want. I'm going to keep the transparency. Inside the eye, Again, we've got these beautiful whites of her eyes there, and the, the light hitting it, creating that shape, a little bit lighter there, and underneath, and then around here, yeah. the corners of her eye. strong. Again we don't want to lose the colour. <coughs> See I shouldn't be doing that. I should actually be taking the light out. Because uh -huh. you lose the colour. You lose the contrast and it goes grey. You see how it went grey? You don't want it to go grey. You want it to be transparent. Okay, and we can use this for background tones as well. This is negative space around the head. It's quite interesting. Um, it's great for doing shapes. And the head sits in space, so we can have it light at the bottom. Back at the top. Anyway, negative space. The same here. Same here. Okay. Stop. Dead. Never to go. It's a bit on the 
cheap. Fix it, glaze it again. I'll fix it, varnish it, glaze again. You can carry on, carry on. Okay, I'm just noticed that, that blends into that. You start to see these lovely changes in tone, a bit more kind of obvious. The more you uh, rub out the light bits, you see. That's where I squint. And if you varnish it and glaze it, it's not going to go anywhere. Right. You can bring out, uh, just going to bring out the button that time. Bring out the button. And the top of the collar. Okay. Beautiful. Still destroy it. Spray it. And take the tape off. I'm enjoy that one. The masking tape. It doesn't come off when it's wet. Okay. Nice. There's the camera. Oh, a little bit there. Right through the picture. It's quite nice. Uh, you are looking up at her. Um, it wants to be slightly more angular. You can always edit it. See? Edit that shape. And then vanish it. Don't forget, you can't move out once you vanish. So you have to, uh, you have to. Strong. I've got the wrong angle. Um, of my board, not the pitch. Okay, and uh, we can carry on glazing, like I said. Or you can leave it. Well, I'll just show you a little bit of what you could do. So, because, you know, we can. Uh, Add lovely bit of a lizard into that lip at the bottom there. Things like that. And because it's transparent, you can see through it, can't you? Things like that. So, um, now if you don't like it, if you don't like it, then move it out. That's a better colour. Okay, thanks for watching. Tomorrow's dripping, so uh, portrait, draw the head, throw a load of colour at it, do the same thing. Uh, only a little bit of charcoal for drawing. See you then, then, and uh, thanks for watching, Linda. <laughs> Bye for now.